Today in this 2018 Chevrolet Colorado, we'll be having a look at and showing you how to install the Roadmaster Automatic Battery Disconnect with Switch for towed vehicles, part number RM-766. Here's what our battery disconnect looks like installed. Now the reason you're going to want this, on the Colorado, when you're flat towing this behind your motorhome, Chevrolet does require the battery to be disconnected. This will save you time and energy from having to open the hood and manually remove your battery terminal. This will do it automatically via a solenoid built into this disconnect via a simple press of the switch inside the vehicle. We'll show you that now. With our battery reconnected, our engine starts normally. When we disconnect it, we have no power at all anymore and our vehicle is now safely in tow mode without us doing anything under the hood. Now when comparing this to other quick disconnect options that we have available on our website, such as the DECA, that one requires you to go underneath the hood and turn a wheel to disconnect your battery terminal. This one, you don't have to do that. It's just all inside the vehicle and it's just a simple press and you're good to go. Now for this particular flat tow setup, we use a Roadmaster EZ4 base plate, a Roadmaster automatic battery disconnect, the Roadmaster 7 to 6 wire diode flexo coil wiring kit for our lighting system. For our braking system, we use an SMI stay and play duo. And for our tow bar, we use a Roadmaster Falcon 2 tow bar. Depending upon the hitch height of your motorhome, you may or may not need a high low adapter. We have many different options available for you on our website. And now that we've gone over some features, we'll show you how to get it installed. To begin our install, we need to locate a place to mount our disconnect. We're gonna mount our disconnect right in this area here. We already went ahead and used a paint marker to mark where our screws are gonna go through. Now we'll drill two small pilot holes in the center of those marks. Now we'll take our solenoid. We'll stick it over those holes and we'll secure it with the provided self-tapping screws. All right, that's a nice solid mount, and it's out of the way of any of our components that we may need to access. Now we need to gain access to our positive battery terminal and our fuses and cables that are underneath here. So we'll lift up on this tab here, pull up, pull up here. There's another tab here, so we pull, we can lift, and the whole thing will open. Now we're going to remove our positive battery cable. To do that, we'll loosen the 10 millimeter nut that's over the battery post itself. Pull the cable off the terminal. And we'll remove the 13 millimeter nut over here in our fuse block. And we'll lift the cable off. Now we took our cable from our solenoid or disconnect that's labeled battery cable we routed it behind all the factory cables here. And we're going to place this onto the stud on our fuse block and down inside like that and reinstall the factory nut. Now we'll take our heat shrink tubing here and we'll slide it over our remaining cable from the disconnect that says battery post. Now we're gonna attach this cable to our factory battery cable. To do that, we'll take this bolt, nut, and washers. We'll have the bolt go through the cable. We'll place on a washer. And that'll go in between our factory cable and the new cable. Place on another washer. And then we'll thread on the nut. Now we'll go ahead and tighten down the bolt and nut. Now we'll slide our heat shrink tubing over where our cables bolt together and we'll use a heat gun, which we have available on our website, to shrink this down. Now we'll use our provided wire loom just to help better conceal and protect our battery cables that we're adding. 
we're gonna leave this one disconnected until the very last step so we don't have any power in any of our system. This will go to our positive terminal in the battery, so we'll just set that aside for right now. Get our cover out of the way here. The white wire, this needs to go to ground on our system so our switch will work properly. We're gonna ground our wire underneath this 10 millimeter nut on the negative terminal of the battery. So what we're gonna do is we'll strip off some insulation from this wire, place on our ring terminal, and I wanna crimp that ring terminal on. Remove this 10 millimeter nut, place the ring terminal over that stud, reinstall the nut. All right, now we're inside of our vehicle on the driver's side, looking at our lower dash panel underneath the steering wheel. We need to remove this panel. Now, in order to remove this panel, we'll have two seven millimeter screws on the bottom, just like this one, that we can remove. Now we'll grab this panel and we'll pull it away from our dash. Now we'll unplug our headlight and our four wheel drive selector sw switch. We'll slide back on these red lock tabs, press on the tab behind it, and pull to separate. We'll set this panel aside. And this is where we're gonna install our switch in this general area here. But behind this panel, right in the area, there's another metal panel. And we can't have our switch making contact with a metal surface because it'll act as a conductor and thus make the switch ineffective. So we're going to unbolt this panel here by removing the four 10 millimeter bolts and modify the panel. Here we have our panel in a vise now. This section right here, we're just gonna cut it off. And we'll cut it off using a cutoff tool. We'll take the metal panel now and reinstall it into its original position. Okay, now we need to drill the hole to mount our switch on our panel. We're doing ours right in this area here. Since we trimmed that area out on the metal panel, we're fine. Let's try to make it somewhat centered. Drill a small hole to start. Now we'll enlarge our hole to the appropriate size as indicated in the instructions. Now we'll take our switch and we'll push it through the hole. Okay, with the switch pushed through, we'll now take our nut that'll secure it in the back, thread it on, and we'll snug it down. We don't need to go super tight. Just a little bit past hand tight will be okay. Now underneath the dash behind our parking brake where our hood release cable goes through the firewall, there's a grommet. We're gonna take a screwdriver and we're gonna poke a hole in this grommet. With the hole poked in our grommet, we'll now take a pull wire of some sort and poke that through the hole. Underneath the hood, here's our pull wire that we shoved through the firewall. We attach it to our gray wire and we're gonna bring this inside the vehicle. Okay, we've cut off the excess of our gray wire and we secured it up to this wiring harness on the dash with a zip tie. Now, as you can see, there's a red and a black wire inside this duplex wiring. It's called duplex because there's two. So now we'll take a knife and we're gonna split the insulation around both wires a little bit. That way we have access to both individual wires. And we're gonna strip the insulation on the red and the black wire. So we'll slide our wires into the holes in our switch. Now, it doesn't matter which wire goes to which section on the switch. So you just stick it one side 
tighten the set screw back over the wire and do the same for the other wire. Okay, with our switch connected, we can now reinstall our panel. Just making sure we plug all of our electrical connectors back in. And now we can take our positive battery cable, reinstall it over our positive battery post and we'll tighten down the nut. Okay, now we'll go to our fuse holder on our disconnect, open the cover, and we'll install a provided seven and a half amp fuse. Okay, with the fuse installed, we can now close the dust cover over the fuse. We went ahead and trimmed just a little bit of our positive post cover here off so we can still close it and protect the terminal. We also zip tied our cable here out of the way so we still have clean access to our fuse box and our main fuses and can still get to our battery and it won't rub against our air conditioning line. And now we'll test it out to make sure it's working. When we first install it, it should be powered off. We'll press the button once. We'll hear a loud click and we'll try to start the vehicle. Okay, engine starts, we'll shut it off. Press the button again, and we'll try to start it now. And nothing happens, so we know it's working properly. And that completes our look at an installation of the Roadmaster Automatic Battery Disconnect with Switch for towed vehicles, part number RM-766 on this 2018 Chevrolet Colorado.